So here's the deal, guys. Andrew Scheer is done as conservative party leader. I think it's just a matter of time. He might not know it yet, but he's done. After the election, I did a series of videos where I talked about this, about how Andrew Scheer was sort of alone amongst the party leaders and people wanting him gone, or at least people being divided on the question. Jugmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau and Blanchette, they have support from their party. Whether you feel they deserve it or not is irrelevant, they have support from their party. And most Canadians don't want to see those leaders resign. But the Conservative Party was really divided. In some cases, it was a 50-50 split. Should Shear stay or should he go? And if you go to a leadership convention and only 50 or 60% of your party supports you, often you'll be pressured to resign if you have that little support at a convention. Normally you need to get at least 70, but preferably 75, 80, 85, you know, the closer to 100, the better. If only 60% of your diehard support you, that generally means that Canadians don't support you. But it's about more than that. It's also about the fact that you have alternatives like Peter McKay. Now, Peter McKay has tried to downplay the fact that he wants to be leader. He said he doesn't want the job, but that's what you have to say at this point. Peter McKay doesn't want to be the one to look like he pulled the trigger, but rather that the membership did and he would reluctantly step into the leadership role after somebody else took Sheer out for him. Peter McKay is definitely seen as an alternative. For a lot of people, he's seen as a non-Western, non-social conservative who can win over, you know, voters in Ontario and Quebec and the Maritimes and in general, maybe not lose the West because, you know, they have nowhere to go uh, on the right. The PPC really isn't an option, as we've seen. They're sort of stuck with conservatives. And so those two things right from the start led me to believe that Andrew Scheer was in real trouble. And while his own caucus has not turfed him yet, you know, the caucus didn't revolt, you know, right after the election and demand he leave, various movements in the Conservative Party are showing me that he's in real trouble because he doesn't seem to have a rock steady constituency ready to back him in his continued role as leader. Shear's narrative is that he needs to stay on because conservatives can't jump from leader to leader and that they made some gains in this election and they need to keep on that path to defeat Justin Trudeau, you know, in 2023 or likely before then because we're in a minority government. But social conservatives, as the Globe and Mail is reporting, are increasingly disenchanted with Shear. He didn't get the job done, and some of them, which is maybe surprising to us on the left, didn't feel he was social conservative enough, and so they might want a different option. And on the other side, you have a lot of voices in Quebec that don't feel that Scheer's brand of conservatism sells well in their province, be it on environmental or social issues. They don't feel Scheer can make significant gains in Quebec. And if conservatives want to win, Quebec is one of those key areas where they could have to make gains. But Scheer's brand of conservatism isn't seen as selling there. And so whether it's Quebec conservatives or whether it's social conservatives, people are not happy with Andrew Scheer. And all of this leads me to believe, frankly, that he's done. He's trying to put forward a leadership pose. He's trying to say that I'm in the fight. That's what he was saying today. He's put forward his shadow cabinet. He has Leona Alislev, a former liberal, a kind of Toronto area MP, to be his deputy leader, signaling that, you know, he's making Toronto a priority and he's picking somebody who is at least ostensibly something of a moderate because she was a former liberal. So she might be one of these blue, red, you know, borderline conservatives that, you know, maybe uh, can appeal to those suburban moderate voters. He's trying to do the right things, but I don't think it's going to work. Because I feel that a lot of conservatives that were hardline social conservatives weren't going to be happy with someone like Andrew Scheer. He wasn't hardline enough. At least he didn't appear to be. And a lot of moderates don't see a hardline conservative from the Western provinces as somebody who can win the big one in Ontario and Quebec. And that's what it's all about. Andrew Scheer won the popular vote. That's a significant win. I mean, that's important. Scheer has some things he can point to to justify, you know, his election not being a total failure. On the other hand, it doesn't matter under first past the post, which is a broken system, but it doesn't matter under first past the post that you win the most votes. 
if all your votes are clustered in some ridings or in some regions. So winning rural ridings in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta by 80-point margins is irrelevant when you lose by a couple thousand or a few hundred votes in some cases in parts of the 905. That's why they lost this election. If their vote was better spread out because they had more moderate support in Atlantic Canada, Ontario, and Quebec, the Conservatives could have easily won a minority government in this election. Maybe more, but they didn't. And Sheer is seen as unable to win over those people. It's not even just the policies of Sheer, it's his image. It's his identity as a kind of Christian right-wing social conservative that is unappealing to far too many people in Ontario and Quebec where the bulk of votes are and where so many close ridings are in those two provinces. Sheer isn't the guy for a lot of people. So whether it's fair or not, whether it's the best move or not, we can't really be sure. We can't look into the future. But I really do feel the conservative membership is going to reject Andrew Scheer. They might do it for different reasons. In some cases, various wings of the party might reject him for totally contradictory reasons. You might have some people, for instance, reject him because he's too conservative and then reject him because he's not conservative enough. But the point is, is that those coalitions I feel at the conservative convention will add up to at least 40% of the membership and will put Andrew Scheer in a position of real trouble. He might end up with a Tom Mulcair situation where he literally loses his confidence vote. Or, I think this is probably more likely, he ends up in that nether region, around 60 to 70%, where technically he can stay on, but there will be very, very high levels of pressure on him to resign. And I really do feel that both wings of this conservative party, people who want a moderate, quote-unquote, red Tory leader, or people who want a true hardline social conservative, are not happy, and they both feel like they can and should roll the dice on trying to get a new leader. Is that the right move? We can't be sure. In a minority government, it's always a risk to switch your leader because the other parties might call a snap election to capitalize on your division and weakness. On the other hand, if you feel that Sheer has hit his ceiling and can't win the big one, then maybe it does make sense to switch your leadership and go in a different direction. Ultimately, however, this is going to be a very interesting time for Canadian politics and for the Conservative Party. You're going to see these debates rage. During this period, it will be very interesting because it'll make it very difficult for Andrew Scheer to juggle his various tasks. He's not only going to have to be the official opposition leader and be in question period grilling Justin Trudeau, but he's now going to have to basically work to defend his job. He's going to have to meet with conservatives all across the country and convince hardline social conservatives in the prairies, but also moderates in eastern Canada. And that's going to be a very, very hard square to circle. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to weaken his performance in the House of Commons. This is going to mean, I feel, that Jagmeet Singh will effectively become the leader of the opposition during this period because he's the biggest federalist party other than the conservatives. And so with Andrew Scheer effectively being drawn into a premature leadership race, because even if he ultimately holds on, the next few months will be him campaigning for his job, he will not be fully effective as a leader of the opposition. This also likely means that at least until the conservative convention, but especially afterwards, if Scheer loses, there won't be any chance of an election happening in this minority parliament. Minority parliaments can fall at any time, technically. But if one of the major opposition parties is effectively experiencing a leadership crisis or a leadership debate, that party is going to be very, very reluctant to pull the trigger and pull down an existing government. I don't see that happening. So what this means is, is that the Conservative Party is going to be in deep, deep flux over the coming weeks and months, and that the Liberal Party will likely have more stability than usual under a minority situation, but it's also an opportunity for Jagmeet Singh to effectively be the biggest Federalist Party leader in the House of Commons in opposition because Andrew Scheer is going to be increasingly divided between saving his own job outside of Parliament and doing his current job inside Parliament.